Jeannie and John Alcott welcome you to Word of Power broadcast today. This message can equip and empower you to achieve and receive what God has for you. We believe by the end of this teaching and time of prayer, you will feel the power of God in a greater way. You'll sense how near He is and how He desires to help you. As God's presence and anointing touches you, receive the miracles and answers waiting for you. We encourage you to contact us at the end of this broadcast. Jeannie and John are ready to pray in faith over your life. Now, receive a word of power. Hello, this is Jeannie Alcott. You know how it is to be concerned about something, and you just don't know if it's going to happen, so you feel a bit worried. And then someone, a friend or family member says, don't worry. Well, this is what God is saying to you now. Don't worry. But he's adding a very powerful message to those words. He also wants you to know, don't worry, it will happen. So you don't have to doubt or be concerned or be distraught. Don't lie awake at night or pace the floor or pull your hair out. Go around saying to yourself, it will happen because God said so. See your answer or blessing or desire as approaching, not getting further away from you, but approaching. You can't see it coming around the corner in a physical way, but it's there in the spirit. Now, as you believe, you start moving it into where you are. Your believing, in essence, goes out and grabs what is waiting there for you in the spiritual realm and pulls it into your life. You move into your space, so to speak. You move it out of the spiritual space and into your space. But because you don't see it happening, it can be easy to worry. It's a painful time, isn't it? Our faith tells us this will happen. I'll see the difference, the change, the help will come. But then as the days drag on, we may think, shouldn't it have been here by now? Shouldn't this have happened? Where is it? Hey, we're believers. We don't want to be in doubt. We're standing in faith. But boy, as we view those conditions, it's hard to keep seeing them be that way. They should have been different by now. I read a book once because the name of it caught my attention. It said, Three Minutes to a Pain-Free Life. Great promise to people who are in pain. Just a few minutes of your time each day doing what they say, and you can be pain-free. If you believe in the program that's in the book and you do it, you can experience the results of it. Well, what if God said something to you such as that? What if He said, Your answer is coming to you in two hours, fifteen minutes, and nine seconds. Wouldn't it be great to know the second when you would be pain-free from a problem? You were going to come out of those conditions or going to see something arrive or get what you desire? But that's just what we're saying is happening in the spiritual realm. Just as sure as God knows when He's going to send Jesus back for the second coming, He knows when He's sending what you need. You don't know when, the hour or the minute, but you can know for certain it will happen. So don't worry. Believe that if you follow the program in his book, The Word, you will be pain-free. The right moment will come, and it will be there without a moment to spare. I like how a partner of this ministry describes how it happened for her. She was desperate to find a house, but she didn't have much time, and she couldn't take off work to get the house and move into it. So she felt very pressured, almost as if she was in a time trap. So we all stood in faith that in the right moment, everything would fall into place. And now here's an update. Here's what she's written to us. I know it's been a while since I've written, but the last month or two has had a lot going on. But I have seen the faithfulness of God in it all. Then she goes on to say how she made a choice to focus on God and His Word and on His truth in spite of all that was going on. In other words, she was doing what she must do so she didn't worry. She believed. And because of it, here's what happened. She says, God had a house for me to rent just in time. There's that without a moment to spare answer that she received. Then she went on to say, Also, my desire to move some things into the house a bit at a time worked out, so I wouldn't have to take off from work without pay or overwork myself. He also provided me help needed to get my heavy stuff moved. Thank you for all your prayers and support. I'm grateful for your Holy Spirit-led intercession for us. Well, when God does something, doesn't he do it great? Without a moment to spare, she has a home and enough time to get all her stuff moved so it doesn't interrupt her job. And she doesn't lose pay. He even provided some strong people to move the heavy stuff for her. But here is the most important factor of this whole personal story. In the process, 
She discovered how not to worry because she knew it would happen, to believe God's word and focus on his truth. That's the only way we can come to that point, the point where we don't worry because we believe it will happen. We have to get there by focusing on what we know deep in our spirit is true from God. He will fulfill his word. We don't know the day or hour or minute, but we know this. God is true to his word and what he says will happen. There was another woman who didn't have a moment to spare if she was going to save her home. Her name was Abigail, and she was unaware when an incident took place that could cause so much trouble for her home. 1 Samuel 25 tells us her husband was Nabal, who was a wealthy man, but he is also described as a stubborn and ill-mannered person. However, his wife Abigail was described as beautiful and very intelligent and wise, so she was putting up with a lot happening. But it came to a head one day when he did something stupid. David, who was going to be the next king of Israel, had a band of men with him as they were traveling. And they came into an area where the shepherds of Nabal were keeping his sheep and having them sheared. So he helped to guard them. Well, because David and his men did that, not one animal was missing, which is very unusual. Most often when a flock is being taken to be sheared, some are harmed or stolen or captured. So David and his men were a great blessing to the shepherds and the sheep. As a result, David sent word to the owner Nabal, and after telling about the service he had done for him, in return he requested that he make a small contribution of food for his men and him. You would think this very wealthy man would say, Sure, you save me so much money by saving my sheep and helping my shepherds that I'll make a feast for you. But he wouldn't give him so much as bread or something to drink. He referred to David and his men as worthless people. So David got riled up when he got the message back of what Nabal had said. He decided to show him how much they were worth. So he said to his men, get your swords. And he began to strap on his own sword. Then 400 of his men took off with the intent of wiping out the entire household of Nabal. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Abigail finds out from the servants what happened. They tell her that her husband insulted David and his men, even though they were very good to them, and they were a wall of protection to them and the sheep. The servant says to her, You better think fast, for there is going to be trouble for our master and his whole family. He is so stubborn that no one can even talk to him. Have you ever felt that pressure? You better think fast. There isn't a moment to spare. Trouble is coming. Those kinds of words can cause such worry. This is when we have to believe what we need will happen as we turn to God. He will guide us into the miracle he has for us. Because Abigail was wise in God, she did just what he put on her heart. She took bread and drink and grain and some raisin and fig cakes and some meat and packed them on the donkeys. Now that had to require some time to pull together. But you can't panic as you're pulling together what God has shown you must be done. As you're going about doing what you must do, be at peace. Don't worry. God's will can happen. Just continue making the preparations for the miracle. That's what you're doing. You're making preparations for the miracle. You may feel that you don't have much time to spare, but God will pull it off as you believe. This is where Abigail is. She doesn't have a moment to spare. I mean, an army of angry men are on their way to wipe out her household because of her stupid husband. So God doesn't tell her to go argue with him or run away from the house and allow it to be destroyed. He guides her to pull together all the foods that David and his men need. So the moment came when she rode up to meet David on his way to her household. She dismounted and went up to him with all the courage in her heart. Can you imagine David on his horse with all his men behind him, 400 of them, and they have weapons? And here's this one person walking up to him to try to convince him not to wipe out her home? That's when you know it's God, when you have the guts to keep doing what must be done. It's God. He puts that inside you. He puts inside you the ability to move out and do what he says instead of remaining in worry and allowing trouble to take over. She wasn't going to allow trouble to stop what belonged to her. So Abigail, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, gave a speech to David. First, she acknowledged that David was right. Her husband was wrong. But by her being there, God is keeping David from taking this incident into his own hands and doing something for which he would be sorry. 
Then she shows him all the food she has brought. And she went on to prophesy of all the good things God was about to perform by making David king. And when he was king, she asked for him to remember her. So David accepted her gifts and said she could return home without any worry. He would not kill anyone or destroy her household. A short time after that, her husband died. David knew then God had avenged him. So he sent word to Abigail to come be his wife. And the Bible says she was ready. She agreed and went to him. Without a moment to spare, God protected her and changed her life. Will he do the same for you? Don't worry. It will happen without a moment to spare. Let's pray now and show God we're not worried. We believe it will happen for you. Oh, praise you, God. How relieved we are in our hearts at this moment. We are relieved because your spirit has spoken to my friend. You have assured them they don't have to worry. What they need to see happen will happen. Your love and your power are going before them and preparing the way. Just as sure as you prepared the way for Abigail for a miracle, and you prepared the way for our partner to receive a home, and you did it without a moment to spare, that's what you're doing for my friend. Without a moment to spare, they shall see the evidence of your working, and then they will know that you have been preparing the way all along. There was no need to worry. You had it in your hands, and that's what you're saying to them now. You have it in your hands. No need to worry. So give them peace that they shall see your will done. The goodness of what they desire is transpiring. They shall see it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now keep believing that you're going to see the evidence of how God was preparing the way all the time. He is preparing what you need. We believe without a moment to spare, you will see a miracle. And this is why he's called us here to pray for you. So we can all stand together in faith and focus on his truth. His truth is, you don't have to worry. You're going to see his miracle. This is why we encourage you to share what you're facing. What do you need to see happen? And in a quick way. As soon as we hear from you, we're going to begin praying. Then we're going to write to you. We write the words of God that he has for your life. So get in touch soon. Okay, I'm going to give us a spiritual power line. So go around saying these words. I'm not worried. It will happen. I'm not worried. It will happen. Well, those are good sounding words and they're truth from God. So we want to help you not worry. Be sure you get this message. We'll send you all five parts of it and the prayer times. Just request, don't worry. It will happen. It's offer number AM817, that's 817. You can have a CD of it for a gift of $8 into the ministry, or you can download it from our website for a gift of $5. Call or write or go to alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries dot O-R-G. And I encourage you so much to view on our website some powerful, inspirational videos. Okay, be with me again tomorrow, so join me. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We believe God's Spirit is moving in a mighty way. So don't miss the opportunity for Jeannie and John to pray over your life in a personal way. As you share with them, they will intercede by faith for you to receive all God has for you. Call 918-459-9191 or write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013. Or go to our website at alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org. There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts, as well as request special gift offers and be blessed by devotionals. Now, we encourage you to get a copy of this message and give a gift into God's work. Then expect Him to grow your giving into wonderful miracles. Be with us next time for a word of power.